Really happy to be here with Brian Smith. Um, Brian, you and I have known each other for a couple of years, and I've always uh, we've we've always connected. Not just, of course, we talk about business type things, but uh, on a I think much more even more meaningful level is we talk about spirituality, spiritual things. Um, I've really admired how you've uh, how you've developed your your um, content online. You have a um, YouTube channel and podcast where you interview some very um, interesting spiritual uh, guides, mentors, teachers, authors. And so folks, first of all, I'm going to give you the link below. So check out Brian's uh, Grief to Growth podcast and YouTube channel, et cetera. And you've also written a book called Grief to Growth. Right? Yes, I have. Yeah. And it's um, about, well, it's among other things, it's about the story of um you uh, you had a 15 year old daughter who suddenly passed away um how many years ago is that now brian it'll be nine years ago next week wow nine years ago and obviously massively transformed your life um you have learned uh, uh, over and over how to deal with grief and you've helped so many others you've you've uh, you know worked with organizations to help to help people and your um, your mission is to help people who have suffered great loss regain their bearings and find joy and purpose in life. I love that. Uh, that's wonderful. And um, so as we get going, is there anything else you want to say about your background? You've had several careers. That's also interesting. We never really talked about that before. But uh, anything else you want to say about your background before we get into the, the topics today? No, I, th I think that covers it pretty well. Okay, okay. So, so given that grief to growth is the central theme, right? It's the name of the, of your of your uh, podcast, et cetera, and the and the central theme. Um, yeah, let's talk about this. I mean, we all experience various levels of of tragedy in our lives, and so and you, I mean, it's hard to imagine one that's that's uh, even bigger than the one you've experienced. So, how do you? Well, let's get right into it. How do you look at tragedy and and therefore dealing with that? Well, I think of um, tragedy or, or pain or loss, all those things we call it in our lives, is it's more of a feature than it is a bug of where, where we are, okay. where, where we came to what being humans embodied in this flesh, being spiritual beings embodied in this flesh. Um, I believe that it's it's a it's a feature. It's 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 a part of what we came here to experience. We can't because we we can grow from it. Thus, grief to growth. So when you, what I really help people do is to reframe the things that we call tragedies, the things that we say are, are quote unquote bad and to look at it a different way to look at it with more curiosity. Like what, what could this be here to teach me? What could I take and what can I do with this thing that's happened to me? Can I use it? Can I transform it in any way? Can I find any kind of, any kind of silver lining in it? And that's, uh, that's basically what I try to help people do is to, is to reframe and try to pull back and look at things from a bigger picture perspective rather than just the the immediate pain that we go through. You are also a coach um, and you say a mental fitness trainer. I love that. And so you actually do work with people one-to-one um, -one, uh, on these things. And so, you know, I'll, you know, I'll put your website below and people can reach out to you if they want that kind of support from you. So as we, as we experience tragedy, as we start to grieve, um, I don't know, maybe you could walk us through a little bit about that experience, like what to expect. And then how do you like, when does the reframing start to happen? I guess, because it's hard. It's I, I, I can imagine it's hard. It's hard for us to just do the reframing as, as soon after the event as possible, or, or, or maybe not. Maybe that is the right time to start that kind of work. No, actually, you're right. The first time, you know, I was just talking with the grief, a grief guy uh, yesterday, and she introduced me to this concept she calls the waiting room. So when we have this big loss, we have this big tragedy, we go into this phase that she calls the waiting room. And while I, I don't like things that structure grief because it's not structured, there aren't five stages. There's some common things that we go through. So the first phase I would call the white knuckle phase. You're just hanging on. You're just trying to get through the day, through the hour, through, you know, you're, if you've lost a child, like I have, a lot of times parents want to be with their children, which means that they don't want to be on the planet anymore. Someone loses a spouse. You do go through that. And the reframing doesn't allow us to bypass, bypass all that. We don't go from that deep loss to like, oh yeah, everything's okay. 
But as she said, you kind of go into this waiting room phase. And this is the this is the scary part because people think it's always going to be this way. And I cannot stand this. I can't live like this forever. And they'll say, is my grief ever going to end? And I'm like, well, there's there's two there's two questions there really. Will my grief ever end? No, your grief won't end. But you're not always going to feel this way. You will move forward and you will step out of that, that that waiting room again into that next phase of life, that new life. So when I'm working with people, I have to be very gentle and understand where where are you? I mean, we don't just come in on the first meeting and say, hey, guess what? Everything's great. No, it's like, where are you today? How do you feel right now? What little steps can we start taking? What things can we think about that we can be grateful for, even in the midst of the tragedy? We still have other children. We still have our spouse. We still have our health, you know, whatever it is, just little things that you can start to re regain that perspective on life that not all is lost. So that's a, it's a process. It takes a while to work through. It could take weeks, months, years. It depends on the person. Of course, absolutely. And then there's sort of the, the meaning that the, the tragedy had on them. And um, so Okay, I I really appreciate uh, having that metaphor the white the white knuckle phase just hanging on. So, when you have worked with clients on these things, have you noticed that um, there's a I mean, what what type of person do you think is is ready to do this kind of work? Um, I don't know if there's such a thing as oh you you should wait you should be in a waiting room for three months six months after the after the, the the tragedy before you do this kind of work, whether it's with a coach like you or it's like mm -hmm. consciously like okay you better start reframing things and retraining your 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 mind and your heart, um, yeah any 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 and so so if for example if someone were watching this right now and they had a they had they they have a friend or a loved one who has gone through grief. How how do we know to refer them to someone like you? At what point, or or maybe it's it's type of person. Yeah, that's a really good question because um, as I've done training for for this grief work, um, not everybody needs grief grief counseling or grief guidance, and in fact, it can be counterproductive, believe it or not, for some people. Uh, they're different, you know, different types of grief. It depends on the loss and it depends on the person. If you lose your 95 year old grandmother who died in her sleep, you know, that's probably going to be a, a fairly simple form of grief. Um, and people can usually work through that on their own. When you lose a child, for example, like I did, it was 15 years old, or you lose a spouse or, you know, something like that, that could be more complicated. And that might be something you need help with. And it's really up to the person as to when they think they might need that help. Uh, if you're not able to function, if you feel like you're quote unquote stuck, you're not, you're not moving forward, you're not progressing. Um, but the thing is, I disagree with some people that think that d grief is like a disease. And in fact, the latest DSM kind of refers to uh, prolonged grief disorder as a, as a, as a disease or a, as a mental illness or um, so to speak. It's not. It's a natural process we go through when we have a loss, whether there's a loss of a person, a pet, a relationship, whatever it is. So when people come to me, the only thing you have to have to be a, is like, I want to get better. You just have to have that that I that I want to get better. That so that's that's a minimum requirement. That's so. Of all the people that reach out to me, there's only been one person where I said, you know, I can't, I can't work with you because this person just was not at that point. They just wanted to wallow in their anger and their sadness and their bitterness. And that's okay. That, that person might, you know, come along later, but I can't do the work for someone. So it's just being willing to do the work and understanding that it is work. It's a, it's a process, but it is, um, it is work. I call it a practice. Um, I have, I have things that I put people through. I'm like, I want you to do these three or four things on a daily basis because it's like going to the gym for your physical fitness, this is your mental and spiritual fitness. You have to work it. Yes, I, I want to talk about this with you because I, I believe in this idea of practice a lot as well. I, you know, I talk about like, for example, creating content is creativity fitness instead of just like a chore or uh, just something we do. But it's like, okay, we, we look at it as a way of growing ourselves. And so I really like that you're giving your clients these kinds of exercises as a way, well, as exercises. 
So mm -hmm. can can you give us give us an idea of what some of those exercises are? Not not that you're able to like give us everything here, but but just to kind of give us a sense of what 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 does that work look like? Yeah, well, I, I wrote a guide, and what I did after after a few years of going through this myself, I'm like, what are the key things that I've discovered? And there were there were four things, um, and they happen to spell the acronym GEMS, G, G, G E M S. So the first one is gratitude. And I know when I say this to people in grief, they roll their eyes just like I did for a long, long time. You know, this idea of gratitude. And we don't have time to go into all of the reasons today, but it's a very beneficial practice. So the, that's the first thing. The second thing is exercise. You have to move your body. So I, I say, find whatever works for you. It's different for everybody. Um, I, one person I interviewed for my podcast, her thing was powerlifting. So somebody might tell you yoga or you know, whatever, keep trying things until you find something that works for you. But it's really important to, to start working your body, move your body. Um, the other thing is mindfulness. It's a, it is a practice. It is something you have to work on because we have to build that mental fitness because your brain's going to start taking you down a path that you don't want to go down. And you've got to be able to recognize that, to catch it and have the mental fitness to pull yourself back to where you want to be. So mindfulness and meditation. And then the fourth one is actually sleep. It's really important to get the proper, the proper sleep. Um, and then I have actually the second or the S kind of stands for both that and for self-care, because I find a lot of clients that, that work with me, they're very high achievers. They, they come to me because they're like, I want to fix this problem. Uh, and the first thing I have to tell them is like, you have to take care of yourself. You're taking care of everybody else around you but it's really, really important to take care of yourself. So I've actually written a couple of, of short guides for both the self-care and for the GEMS practice. Yeah, that's, I mean, what you said is something we should all do, whether or not we're grieving or not. I think that's a really nice, compact um, set of guidelines. I really, I really like that. And, and this guide, uh, is it somewhere, something people can purchase, uh, download, uh, yeah, actually the gems guide, you can go to my website, just go to grief to growth.com slash gems and it's free. I actually just updated it though. And that's going to be out soon. And that's going to actually be, uh, I think I'm going to put that on Amazon, but there's a free version of it right now on my website. So just grief to growth.com slash gems. And it's worth, you know, whatever it's on Amazon, it's going to be well, well worth, <laughs> well worth whatever price um, for, for a book that is. So let's talk a bit about I mean, I, I could talk to you about this all day, uh, but uh, you have interviewed how many, you would estimate, how many people have you interviewed on your well, YouTube channel or your, or your podcast? I think it's probably approaching 300. Wow. Okay. And these aren't just 300 random people. <laughs> these are three pe 300 people that you um, respect, trust, um, you know, admire their guidance on spiritual things. And well, some are more well-known than others. They're not sure. random but some are some are not sure not all uh celebrities or anything like that yeah. yeah 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 no 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 definitely but um and you know sometimes the the wisest people uh we we've never heard of you know and, yeah. and you're you're kind of discovering these these the wisdom that comes from um people who have been through well real life experiences that are significant and have reflected on them like you have and so i i it's it's kind of a big question to ask but given these 300 conversations um is there anything that stands out to you as a message that keeps coming through that you feel is important to yeah to, to share with everyone the biggest thing is it's all everything in life is about perspective it's it's okay. all in how we look at it the same exact same event can happen to two different people and one person thinks it's a tragedy and the other person sees it as an opportunity to grow. And I've interviewed actually a couple of people, but one that comes to mind, especially was a woman who had had a near death experience uh, and she had been molested as a child. As a, ma as a matter of fact, her father was a convicted uh, pedophile. And her perspective was that was necessary to get to me, get me to where I am today. And I've talked to, and I think about another one, very similar situation where she was abused by a couple of uh, men in her life as she was growing up and no anger, no bitterness, no, you know, just like this is, this is, this is my life path. And if I hadn't had this, I wouldn't be the person I am today. 
So people can take the most tragic events, what we call tragic events, and they can they can uh, alchemize that. They can turn that into uh, gold. They, it, it makes them these incredibly strong, motivated, inspirational people. And so when we look at when I look at someone like that, I'm like, if they can do that, then with the things that we've been through, we should be able to all be able to do that. So that's been the that's been the common th theme. It's like, and most of the people I've interviewed have gone through some form of tragedy. Um, they've gotten to be where they are because they've had a great loss. Wow, and yeah, it, it's like we can't be reminded of this enough because life can literally change significantly when the perspective is shifted. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the, the literal embodied experience of life can even be different uh, when we look at a situation one way versus another. And of course, once we look at a situation in a more powering, uplifting, uh, uh, a way that allows us to, to have more choice uh, and more sovereignty, perhaps, then we start to naturally take the actions that bring uh, that bring more capacity and bring more, uh, I guess, goodness or abundance to our lives, right? Um, what is, so when, well, I guess maybe it's a similar question. It's like all, all of us get stuck in a less uh, helpful perspective at times. Mm -hmm. So how do we, shift out of that i guess like the next time we are stuck on something okay maybe this is two questions one is when we get stuck on well when you i'll just make it personal when you get stuck in a perspective how do you shift out of out of that into something that's more powering and if you have a friend or family member who seems to be stuck in a you know, self-defeating perspective how do we help them to shift well, again, it goes back to that thing. It's all about perspective. And I'll give you a, a really silly example with myself, with my my podcast and my my YouTube channel. You know, I can go and look, and I do the people that are getting millions of downloads and they're on their on your YouTube channel or their podcast, and I can, oh, I'm a failure because I don't I don't have those kind of numbers. You know, I don't have 150 thousand followers or 1.5 million followers or whatever. But then I think back a few years ago, if anyone ever told me I'd have I have fifteen thousand you know subscribers on YouTube now, I would have considered that to be a great success. So and it's and again, I'm it's, just looking now, and you're almost at uh, seven hundred fifty thousand views, so <laughs> and almost eight hundred videos. Right? That's, that's yeah. Game. So it's it's again we have to that there's that human part of us. That it's always striving for the next thing. It's never happy with where we are. So sometimes it's just it's a matter of going back and remembering when I started this. When I took the master heart from you like four or five years ago, I would, if someone told me I was going to be where I am now, and I would just have interviewed, uh, I've interviewed Bernardo Castro. I just interviewed Alex Sikaris a couple of days ago from Skeptico. I've interviewed Sandra Champlain, Suzanne Gates. I mean, these, these are people that are huge in my field. Um, and then it's funny. I was just talking to someone earlier today and it was, I met them on zoom and she goes, Oh, I know you. And so it's really interesting when people that I have no idea who they are say, you know, I know you. So it's a matter of it's a matter of that of that perspective. So that's how we get out of it. We 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 think about like, what am I really doing here? What's the real objective thing? I people that are worried about money. We worry about money because we're not gonna have enough money in 30 or 40 or 50 years. But the true perspective is do you have enough money for it today? Do you have enough money for tomorrow? And the answer is always yes, right? So it's 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 coming back to that perspective. It's coming back to that understanding of what's going on. And then when we can start to apply it to the small things, then with the bigger things, we can kind of say, just start to entertain the idea. What if something good comes from this? Like when I got fired from a job one time and I can say 27, 28 years later, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me. But when it happened in the moment, it was a tragedy. So it's, it's again, just reminding yourself, it's, it's, it's going to be okay. As, as John Lennon said, everything will be okay in the end. If it's not, everything's not okay, then it's not the end. So just waiting for what's that next thing? What's the next door that's going to open? I really appreciate that. I think all of us can relate to this. Um, I, in fact, I mean, just, just today, I uh, received some news that was a bit 
negatively shocking to my system. And I, it's, it's easy to focus on that news and to go, you know, and to feel badly, mm -hmm. <laughs> frankly. And then of course, the more I focus on the news, feel badly, uh, the, the, the just keeps keeps going from there sure. um and 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 then here we are having this kind of uplifting conversation <laughs> you know and so like like if someone asked me how was your day i could say well wow, this this bad thing happened and you know gosh what does this mean for my future da, 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 da. or wow it's a beautiful day i mean i had a conversation with brian and that was very uplifting and but that was very helpful i'm probably going to be thinking about this for a long time <laughs> so like so I, I yeah. appreciate I appreciate that very much. Um, so, um, gosh, another thing I want to uh, ask you is, um, yeah. So, given that a lot of the people here, I mean, you 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 brought up this idea of money and you know, kind of worrying about things. Um, is there any other perspective from your interviews and just your spiritual studies that can be brought into um, how we approach business? perhaps, um, and particularly the, you know, those of us who are going through some difficult time with business, what would you, any guidance or any uh, perspective that what we might want to consider? Yeah, for sure. Um, the thing is, we get so focused on what we do in terms of making a living and, and measuring success by followers or dollars or, or things of that nature. When people have their death experiences and they have their life review, no one ever talks about how much money they made, how many followers they had. And the things that come up in their life review is how did you make people feel? How did you make that stranger that you pass on the street feel, you know, et cetera. So when I get down about my business and my numbers aren't where I'd like for them to be, uh, which is all the time, <laughs> and they're never where I want them to be. <laughs> and that's the other thing you have to realize you yeah. will never be happy if you put your happiness on a number, because you're never oh. going to reach it. When you reach it, so it's true. just the next number. Right. So I try to focus on like that experience I had earlier today when this woman said, hey, I know who you are. Or when someone reaches out and says, I'd like for you to speak to my group, or people say, you know, your podcast has changed my life. So if you touch in your business, one or two or 10 people, and in, in the entire time you, you're doing it, you've been successful. And if you have enough to sustain yourself, you have enough. Um, there's, a, there's a lesson from the Bible I always try to go back to when the Israelites were in the desert and they were getting manna every day. And they would get a, their daily amount of manna and they were told, don't gather enough for two days. And if they did, it would spoil. And on the Sabbath, they did get a double portion so they didn't have to gather on the Sabbath. But I, I'm like, that's that lesson is you only need enough for today. So just focus on today. So that's what I would say to people. Man, that's so good. I, I, I need to hear that myself. I appreciate very much that you shared that. Um, okay, so uh, I can't believe it. We we're only have a few minutes left. So I wanna I wanna wrap this up, but I wanna um I wanted you to share about your you have a new uh group that you formed. Um there's a free version of the group. Uh, so mm -hmm. folks who are watching this, you know, you don't have to pay anything to, to join the free part of the group. And of course, there's a premium part of the group for those who want more than that. But tell us about this. Tell us about what kinds of discussions uh, you are facilitating there. Um, what kinds of people join the group? What what might people expect? Yeah, it's uh, grief to growth .com slash community. Uh, it is a it is a private group. So you do have to apply to be a member. Um, it's not really strict, uh, but I just want to make sure that no crazy people are joining. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's it's mainly people who are in grief, but you don't have to be in grief. It's people who want to explore spirituality, who, who we are as humans. I post my podcast episodes there. We have conversations about them. I post books that I like, music that I like, things that are uplifting. Um, and we support people who are who feel like, you know, a woman just earlier today said she had lost her son and she goes, I have no support. And I said, well, now you do. So, you know, welcome to the community. So it's, um, it's trying to get away from some of the stuff on Facebook. I'm moving my Facebook group over there. I started it. We're recording this in June. I started in January. There are a couple hundred people there now. And we're just like-minded souls. I, I love the saying by Ram Das says, we're all just walking each other home. So I want it to be a place where you can feel like you can come and we'll, we walk you know, beside you, we, we mourn with you, we celebrate with you. 
uh, but I want it to be a, a place where people can feel connection. Oh, I love that, man. And to have your leadership and facilitation there is is um is is very valuable. So thank you for thank you for doing that. Um, well, that's about it. I will be I'll be putting the links below. But uh, where can people find you? Basically, you have a YouTube channel. You have a podcast people can look up. You have a book on Amazon that people should check out. Uh, obviously, you have your but anywhere else you you want to mention. Yeah, that's that's it. It's grief okay. to growth. Grief numeral two growth dot com is my website, and then yeah. the YouTube channel is grief to growth, and the podcast is the same wherever you get your podcasts. Yes. So yeah. So for for sure, and I think the the website is really the main place. So I'll be sure to obviously check out that link below. Right. So. Thank you so much, Brian. Good to talk with you as always. Yeah, good to see you, George. Thanks for doing this. Thanks.